Come on in and let me show you my home theater that I built for just around a thousand dollars. Maybe some ideas that you can take if you're looking at building your own. So first, let's just take a quick look around. To be honest, it was the looking at Facebook Marketplace and seeing some original theater movie seats uh, online that really got me going and said, hey, this may be doable. I could buy some inexpensive theater seating, utilize some space in the basement, and create an actual theater experience. So on Facebook Marketplace, I found a set of theater seats where they had taken out the theater seats and had them stored in a building. I went and met the person, looked them over. They looked like they were in good condition, but they had been stored in an area that didn't smell that good. So I was able to get them at a really cheap price. I think all in all, I paid just around $300 for about 15 theater seats. After I got them home, I just laid all the seats out while the sun was shining. I washed and scrubbed them all by hand and used a, an OxyClean detergent and just made sure everything was clean all around. There's something that's different about these theater seats than other furniture you might buy. They're designed to last because the actual foam inside has a really thick skin on the inside so that things don't penetrate past the fabric and the fabric is really good upholstery fabric so they'll hold up for a long time with a lot of wear which is really a great thing something specific about theater seats is that they have brackets that are screwed into the floor so you just can't stand up a chair and sit in it it has to be attached to the floor or something else to stand up freely so I want to be upfront about there are expenses that I didn't have to take so my thousand dollars that I spent you know, already had some things in place so I didn't have to go and buy them, such as my room was already framed out with two by fours, so all I had to do was purchase sheetrock and install that. So that could be an extra expense for you. So let me talk for just a minute about setting up the actual chairs. I had 15, as I said, but for the room, the four by, you know, three rows of four worked out much better. So I, you know, that's how it wound up working out but I just uh, connected the chairs together and first you know practiced by just screwing the chairs into some two by sixes laying flat on the ground and that made them sturdy and so then I basically just stacked two by sixes behind it and then made another level and put the chair behind it and had someone sit in front and someone sit behind and you could look over their head and make sure that with the view of the screen and all that like a theater you're not looking at the back of someone's head that you're actually seeing the screen very well so that that was an important part of it as i kind of built the layers to create the you know the stadium effect for all the seating so i can't over emphasize the importance of using black paint to do the walls as you can see here, the room just changes once the sheetrock is up and then it is just, you know, painted black with some just flat black paint from Walmart. It completely changes the look of the room. I, I call this that Disney effect where it's the dark ride. There can be all kinds of flaws and things, but if your walls are black and the lights are down really low, you won't notice it. You can't see it. So there's no reason to, you know, work on little details and try to fix everything perfect when you can just it'll all kind of just disappear when the lights go down so let me go around the room and kind of point out some of the things that you wouldn't maybe notice without me pointing them out first if you look right now it's just a cement floor we're going to put carpet on that the carpet squares the walls are black and the seams 
I didn't change, you know, didn't finish the seams, left them, just had them put together. If there was any gaps, you could place a masking tape over it so that when you paint it, it kind of just disappears. Like I said, that Disney effect. Then second, the lighting was really important to me. So I went ahead and I ran an actual connection. You know, this may be something if you can't do electrical, might be more of an expense for you, but the lighting is key. So with a dimmer switch, I added these lights that went all the way around that are recessed and flat, the LED panels so that I could, you know, dim the lights. And you'll, you'll notice in some of the pictures how different that effect looks. Then my ceiling and walls were already bumped out like this so i just used that went around it and made sure the ceiling was high enough so that it all worked out i also got the tiles for the ceiling from another project someone was doing it was changing out the tiles in a in a church so i took those tiles and i actually painted them all black so that they have an acoustic value that kind of makes sure that the sound is kept down even though it's pretty loud whenever you're playing a really good sound system at the time I took this picture, I only had the one projector. And this was actually the first one I had that I used upstairs. And it was a, maybe 720, wasn't very good. Um, but I started out with that. And then I started looking for other projectors to improve the quality. So the first one that I came across, I actually purchased on Shop Goodwill. That's the Goodwill's online auction site. I bought a true 1080 commercial Panasonic projector it's like a 2k projector and in my opinion it's as good as you need i mean everyone some people like to go ridiculously for extremely outrageous picture but at 1080 a lot of times your eye can't even tell the difference between 1080 and 4k you know it's a 2k versus 4k so if you're you know just one of those people that has got to have the latest and greatest and the newest and the best it's going to cost you a fortune I literally could build the entire theater for about the fourth of the price of one of the 4K projectors. So just as a price comparison, I paid about $69, including shipping for my 2K projector. Unshop Goodwill, and the picture quality is just great. So just to talk a little bit more about the riser, this is two by sixes. Um, they just were put flat on the floor, straight back, and then I stack them across um, about eight feet um, across, maybe a little shorter once you cut them off. Then when I was done, I placed a um, piece of um, plywood down in front of it, a four foot strip that I could then put a carpet runner on, um, a dark blue carpet runner so that it covered it and it was all carpeted. And that also helps absorb sound. The, the seats and the carpet and all these other things help to absorb sound, which makes it sound really great. Now, one of the other things that's very important is that I had closets along one wall and I had other door openings on other wall, all different spots in the room. So to be able to reduce sound to block out light and to be able to close those areas off and make them look well, I went ahead and I covered those with fabric. I got just a big roll of black fabric and basically just took a board at the top and folded it and stapled it along the top to give it kind of the curtain look. And that way they can be parted and you can still get into those parts of the room or to those closets, but still be able to close them, have the room look nice. That's a very theater thing to do, as well as it helps to absorb sound. Once again, always important to be able to absorb that sound and not have it bouncing off the walls, especially with a loud or good audio system. And while we're looking at this picture, you'll notice also that I put a second projector. They're so inexpensive, especially if you're just about 1080p, to get another good projector and have it mounted right below. That's a 3D projector, so you can do the 3D stuff. But for me, it was important that if I was watching a movie and something happened with a projector, I can just hit a button and switch over to the other projector and make sure that we get to finish the movie, especially if somebody's visiting or something like that. So here you'll notice that I have a Sony 7.2 surround sound system. If you're getting a surround sound you know, audio amplifier, you don't get the same kind of experience having like a sound bar and it's like a 2.1 or something like that. But having seven speakers, six plus a center channel, plus your subs, and it can be very inexpensive. I paid $25 for this at a pawn shop. Also the speakers I got on Goodwill 
I paid somewhere between you know ten dollars to forty dollars for these speakers to get a really good surround sound experience. Different speakers, Yamaha and um, Yonkyo, and I have two subwoofers in the front that are um, Yamaha, and then I have one large 200 watt subwoofer in the back. When you put on all those subs in the right combination, you can really have some great movie theater experiences. Here are a few other things just as a side note. One is, is that when the screen is pulled up, I like having something on the wall. So I have this little montage to The Mandalorian and that was just some pieces that came from Hobby Lobby. Also on the side, these large framed pictures are ones that I took at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida and just had them framed. And I had these before I made the theater. They just seem to fit so well with the black frames. I also like these fake candles that you know, look like real candles. Once again, something I noticed at Disney. Also as a side note, I'm very tech savvy, so some of these things may be more challenging for some of you, but I also have, as you can see here, an iPad on the wall. It allows me to play any music and things without having to have anything else on but the audio receiver and the iPad. Most of the lights and the um, lighting especially is controlled by the Google Home setup. I have all of the canned lights as well as the LED light strips that go around so that I can just say a command and the lights will automatically lower and be set and turn on the subwoofers. Something that's just neat and not very expensive when you use it with the home automation with the Google. For my home audio and video system, I use Plex to be able to store all of my DVDs and movies. I have about 2,000 titles that I have copied in, in Plex that I can use to watch at any time, streaming them through the Apple TV. So this is a great way to get all of your movies consolidated and ready for your theater. Now it's understandable that construction costs and materials are really high right now when I'm recording this. When I did this, the costs were much lower, but it still applies that whatever it would normally cost, it's significantly less when you do things yourself and you maybe get things from different sources than you would normally get them. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. This is what promotes our content and keeps us growing. Hey, I'm Joe, and this is good to know.